We'll open up the uh, uh, AMA today. So format is uh, as follows. What we're going to do is cover a couple of points that I wanted to make, uh, which we all have been feeling as a team at Bo uh, over the course of the last few weeks. I want to put some points across. Uh, then what we will do is go on to the points uh, and questions that the community have raised and we will try and answer each and every one of them. And uh, following that, we will do an update of what's happening at Bo right now. And uh, finally, uh, we will open it up to the floor for questions. And uh, before we end off today, um, uh, we'll you know, give you an idea, next steps, uh, what's gonna happen with regards to the swap and the timelines, okay? So I see someone with a very cute pet there. <laughs> uh, core, core i7, you got a very cute uh, pet dog. <laughs> uh, glad he can join in the AMA as well. <laughs> okay, um, right guys. Um, you know, I'm going, as always, you know, uh, why uh, Crystal and I choose to have our AMAs by video is that you know uh, we want to speak from the heart uh, we get accused of a lot of things but i think one thing that no one can accuse us of is you know when uh, issues are to be faced um, you know we are here to face them head on right not to not to hide away and you know avoid issues so obviously we can't deal with things on a day-to-day -day basis because there's so much going on at work uh, we try our best, you know, to go in and answer questions for as long as we can through our usual community channels. Uh, but what we try and do is on a monthly basis at the AMA become, uh, try and cover the points and the issues in a more comprehensive manner. Oh, wow, we've got a cat as well now. Amazing. <laughs> Core i7, you look like uh, you've got a mini pet store there. Looks great. Um, we at Boat love animals too. <laughs> so, um, okay, I think uh, without further ado, I'll kick off. Um, I want to cover a couple of points that obviously have been troubling uh, us all as a team. Uh, you know, I think it's a well-known fact that, you know, uh, this project has gotten an unusual amount of attention from a group of people out there uh, who claim that, you know, uh, they know the project in many ways better than even Crystal and I do, which is pretty amazing, seeming, seeing as how we don't know these people, we've never shown anything with regards to the project to them, and somehow they seem to know more than we do, uh, which, is, uh, which is pretty amazing, right? Uh, okay, so, you know, I think one of the things uh, I want to address and just get it out there and off my chest, right, is the fact that, um, there are a couple of channels that are running out there. We are very, very aware of them. Uh, we don't go in and say anything because I think it's not worth it. Uh, I think we as a community uh, who are in support of the project and us as uh, management uh, team members and also as founders have better things to do. Uh, these people are not interested in getting facts they are interested in destroying, right? So I told the team that I don't support anyone going in to comment because it's just a waste of time, right? Because these people are not here to be constructive. They are here to just try and create chaos, right? So, um, you know, which I think uh, most of us want the same thing. We want the project to get stronger, we want it to improve, we want the token price to increase, and we want to correct issues and problems and mistakes that have been made. We want to move forward, right? Our job here is not to focus looking backwards because what good does that do for anybody? But the point of these people and their intent is they want to hold us back, they want to drag us down. Let's see it for what it is, right? So I had hoped not to have to start an AMA having to address these points. But I think in light of what's happened, I have no choice. 
right? I want to get this out of the way so that we can focus on points that are about moving the project forward, right? Not looking behind our shoulder at things that could have done better, should have been done better, right? What we're going to do is be better moving forward, right? Not talk about the past because the past has been addressed many, many times already. So I think one of the things that upsets me a lot, right, is us being called a scam project, right? What is a scam project, right? In my mind, a scam project is one where the project raises money and does nothing and basically disappears with the money of contributors and community members. I think all of you who are on this call and who are going to be listening to this recording of this AMA will know that we are not that, right? I think we are the only, one of the first projects that decided to start an AMA by video because I got sick and tired out of a situation where we're talking to people who have no face. We don't know who they are. And at the end of the day, we expected to share very, very detailed information regarding the company, even more so in our case, because we actually have a business, right? And sharing, you know, token details with people we have never seen. We don't know who they are, right? You can't accuse us of that because, hi Talha, good to see you. <laughs> You can't accuse us of that because we are here every month, right? Facing you, talking to you, answering your questions, right? We're not running away, we're not hiding. That's point number one. Point number two, right? I don't need to go further than to tell you we have working products already, right? I'll address that point again because, you know, obviously there have been comments about our product as well. Anything they can find, they will try and attack. What about the projects that have raised money and have delivered zero? It's okay. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, those are scams. They've taken money and delivered nothing. Management is nowhere to be seen. There's nobody to answer questions. If that's not a scam, then I don't know what is. We are not that because we are here facing you, talking to you, right? Every day, if not every day, physically facing you every month talking to you over the phone, calling, texting. I don't see any other project doing that, particularly not from the founders and from the CEO, right? But I accept that we have taken on a responsibility by the community who have put trust in us. And this is the least that we can do. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, we have to be there to face the community. And that's exactly what we're doing, All right? I am of the opinion that the people who are calling us scam are actually the ones who are scammers themselves. Because every time that I've offered to talk to these people, they have never accepted. Why? Because they can't face up to the truth that what they're saying, a lot of which, not everything, but a lot of which they're saying are lies. I mean, if you believe and have conviction in what you're saying, then face up, man up. Not hide behind a pseudonym or JPEG image and start firing at people who are trying to do their best every day. So this I feel very strongly about because I see the amount of effort the team puts in every day, our admins, our supporters, right? And these are innocent people who are trying to do an honest day's job getting assassinated in public by a bunch of cowards. Okay, so I will not accept it, you know. So these people are trying to destroy the project. They don't care. Their objectives are two things, right? One, revenge. I don't know why. Maybe because they were hoping to make a quick buck and they lost money instead. And two, right, the way I look at it is they are trying to create an opportunity for themselves by bringing down the price of the token, right? So that they can buy in and average out. So for me, are their objectives aligned with ours as a community and as a team? The answer to that is absolutely not. 
So if you ask me who are the scammers, it's not us. It's the people out there uh, who are cowardly assassinating right, our team members. It's very unpleasant, it's unnecessary, and it is not working in the interest of us as a total community. Okay, so I think, you know, I've addressed those uh, jokers out there in polite terms is what I would call them, right? Jokers out there who don't have, you know, the courage uh, to man up, to talk to us, but instead in a group where they find courage in numbers to start attacking, particularly my co-founder, Crystal, who I think doesn't deserve it. And I think it's totally wrong. And I think it's very, very cowardly, right? So us as a community, you know, I take it that you are here today because you're interested in the project and what we have to say. We have largely been very, very quiet, right? The supporters, ironically, are the quiet ones. The ones who want to bring the project down are the noisy ones, right? They've gone out there to spread disrepute about the project with the exchanges, uh, with other potential investors and so on. We need to have our voices heard as well, loud and clear. That whilst there are a few people who are not supporting the project, the bulk of us who are in the community want us to succeed. It's time we go out there and have our voices heard as well. We do not need to be nice to these people because I've seen some of the comments that they put out. Uh, it's very, very sad that one human would do this to another, right? Is what I would say. It's sad and it's very, very cowardly. So I don't want to glorify this point anymore enough. What I want to do is ask you all as community members who are in support of the project to go out there to BitMEX, to KuCoin, to, you know, to other exchanges to spread the word about what good we are doing as a community, as a team, and as a project so that our voices will drown out those who are talking rubbish about us. Okay, so please, right, we thank you in advance for your support. But now we ask that your voices be heard as well, because all of us want the same success. Because with the success will come with improved token price, will increase the, the reputation and the uh, visibility of the project, and will make us all feel that we are part of something very, very successful. Right? That's why we're all here, working day in, day out. Right? And you guys taking the trouble to come in and listen to us on a very, very important, uh, on, on what is effectively a work day. Okay? So I think, you know, without, um, without uh, further ado, probably best that, you know, we start out uh, by addressing uh, the questions that are uh, on the spreadsheet that have been collated uh, by Dave. Uh, and these are basically questions and points that have come from our entire community over the course of the last few weeks. So I think uh, let's get to that so that we can address it point by point. And then as I said at the end, I'll add some closing remarks and some uh, uh, time also to answer some of the questions out there. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to the spreadsheet. Okay. Um, all right, I'll start with the first few questions. And, um, you know, we will alternate between uh, Crystal and myself. And uh, Dave, if you can, please uh, help mute and unmute as required uh, to alternate between Crystal and myself. So I think uh, I probably need a few seconds uh, <laughs> respite from the initial opening address. So Crystal, if you can, if you just kick it off and then I'll jump in uh, on the first couple of questions. Dave, hi. Okay, we can now uh, start. Ah, okay. okay, great, because I was muted as well. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Jamal, uh, for sharing that. I thought uh, that was a good start. 
So we'll kick it off. Dave, would you like to start with the questions and we can go through the answers, maybe one by one? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, thanks all for the introduction, Jamal and Crystal. Uh, let's start with the first question. Why did Bolt choose to be active in the blockchain world? Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is a good question. I think it's been covered in uh, previous AMAs, but of course we are happy to share again why this is important. So we want to use the blockchain, offer a digital token, and because we have our own proprietary wallet, and we want to leverage low bandwidth streaming to open up the power of information to everyone. The goals of the Bolt ecosystem is to really improve lives by creating pockets of value for users, transcend the expected value of money by allowing users to convert uh, their average time spent on Bolt Plus and to rebuild trust in media through well-created content which um, inspires positivity. So for us, the blockchain is really critical because it is the system that powers our rewards throughout Bolt Plus and of course our proprietary wallet, uh, Pegasus. Yeah, which is really important. Okay, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Hey. Okay, good one. Next question, can you share more details about the task and development of the Bolt team? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can go on. So basically, well, you can find out more information on our entire team at bolt.global slash about. We have our entire team roster up there. Uh, our team is split uh, across Singapore, London, Malaysia, and also South Africa. Uh, we also have a branch out in Kenya as well, but there's no one obviously based there at the moment. So um, the London office, for example, where Jamal is based, uh, and he is duly in charge, obviously, of the operational uh, excellence of that office is focused a lot on content production uh, because of our proximity to the sporting clubs and the heart of football and cricket action in, in the world. I mean, heart of football is, is in the UK, right? So that's where we do a lot of our content production. Um, having said that, we also have uh, partnerships as well as uh, developers that are working out in the UK uh, office at the moment. Of course, all of us are now working remotely thanks to COVID, which is a bit unfortunate. In the Singapore office, we have our product uh, and also developmental function. We also have our marketing uh, department, um, sales partnerships uh, mostly, and some administrative uh, help. In, the, in Malaysia, we have a lot of our systems and backend support staff and finance. Uh, South Africa right now, we're looking to look at working with uh, content creators and also uh, to extend our partnership with Hisense. So we're looking to build out that a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next question will be, what makes Bolt unique and ready for the future? Okay. Uh, you, would you like me to go on, Jamal, or shall I go on? Up to you. Okay, let me go on. <laughs> so, uh, what, I can, what is I can, I can, if you want. Up to you. No, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay, up to you, up to you. Do you want to rest a little bit first, and I'll continue? I'm okay. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll take the following question, yeah. Okay, okay, sure. So, anyway, um, our vision has always has been to create an inclusive economy that is powered by the world's uh, stories. So, over the last two years, I think Jamal mentioned this, you know, in uh, his opening address today for our EMA, we have been building above and beyond what we had actually said that we would do in our original white paper. I mean, Pegasus was never something that we planned for in our white paper when we did our ICO in 2018. We never planned for more interactive you know, media formats. We never planned for implementing a comprehensive rewards ecosystem together with interactive uh, content features. Um, we've also never actually planned for a new TV app that is gonna be uh, fully ready and launched you know, in April 2020 this year. So a lot of these things that have um, happened, right? have happened because we both Jamal and I saw a greater vision and what else could we do that is going to go above and beyond for the project. You know, it's one thing, as we said, that, you know, we raised money at a time, you know, we built what we needed to build. And even in the grand scheme of things at, at that time, we didn't raise as much as many other projects, you know. Um, so I would say that during this period and building this had allowed us to really develop a sense of empathy for our users 
and also to kind of build the really, really strong foundation which allows us to bring blockchain invisibility to the forefront. We've also had to become very creative in how we approach organic marketing and growth of our users through our established partnerships. So, I mean, for example, for the Hisense partnership, by working with them, we are able to get pre-installations done instead of spending aggressive marketing budget to acquire these users through our content because content basically powers engagement for these devices. So I would say, couple of things make us really unique. We have these amazing partnerships. We've gone above and beyond our, the journey that we set out in the last two years because we wanted to do more. We wanted to achieve more and we know that the token could be a very, very strong force for good in the ecosystem and the value would reflect accordingly in the future. I think, of course, in the last couple of weeks, what has happened has not been pleasant, but the team has not given up and we are all still relentlessly building. And with the token swap completion and the trading resumption, everything I think would be a lot more stronger than it was before. So we want to basically create an ecosystem that is driven with purpose, curate content that is radically positive and do our bit to rebuild trust in media. And this is what we're trying to do as a whole ecosystem as a whole. I think this year is going to be very exciting for us. There are a couple of questions after that that have asked, what is our plans for 2020 and 2021? Um, I would say 2020 is going to be very good in terms of how we are going to really position our content and grow even further, but we will share more later. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Crystal. So this is one of the most uh, questions recently from the community. Why is the BOLT token important for the BOLT ecosystem? Um, Jamal? Hey, yeah, yeah, Ken. Um, all right. So the Bolt uh, token ecosystem is important uh, very um, basically because we want to use it as a sustainable manner of rewarding our community members, uh, our users, and also content producers for making contributions, whether you know, uh, it is data provision through engagement and interactivity, contribution of content to us. Um, this is a sustainable way of rewarding versus giving out cash to these parties, right? This is why many, many media companies out there never stop raising money. Right, these uh, companies have a constant process of going out there to raise money because the platforms that they operate need to constantly get new injections of cash, which we feel is not sustainable. Right, you can only raise so much cash uh, before you lose control of the business. So, using the token, we saw a method of rewarding uh, people who contribute to the network effect who contribute to our repository of content uh, in a more sustainable manner and also has the opportunity of them getting upside, right, by virtue of seeing the increase in the value over time of the reward system, which in this case is the boat token. So that was the primary reason why we came up with, uh, you know, the boat token. Right, to ensure that we can grow the bold uh, business, the bold network and the bold ecosystem uh, in a manner that allows us to chart our destiny and maintain control of it. Right, so that's the primary reason. So I see another question next, which is, could we get more regular tokenomics updates? Okay, yes, definitely. I think this is something after you know, the last episode, uh, we said that in the interest of increasing transparency, uh, increasing accountability to our community, we will issue more regular monthly uh, token uh, reports or updates. So yes, moving forward, this will be um, uh, an ongoing process. And obviously, if there are any uh, between uh, uh, between releases of the reports uh, within the month, if there are significant updates, we will also come back to the community without waiting for the next report, uh, which may be a couple of weeks down the road. 
right? So this is our commitment as a management team uh, to the community and something that we think we can do a lot better with moving forward. I think uh, next question is, why did we choose Ethereum and Zilliqa and what's the latest update on the Binance chain? Okay, I think uh, this is a very topical question right now. Um, so the point about first, uh, I think to address very simply why we chose uh, Zilliqa uh, because simply because it is a proven robust blockchain uh, operating a system of smart contracts, which I should add, we are already trialing right now. Right. So basically, if you, um, you know, we have very, very um, uh, close uh, contact with the Zilliqa team. Uh, there are a couple of projects when we come out of the um, test phase we will announce uh, to the community. I think these are some very, very uh, uh, exciting developments, shall we say, uh, particularly for onboarding uh, content creators and also to onboard uh, new advertisers and sponsors in a more seamless manner using the system of smart contracts uh, to come onto the bold uh, business platform. I think the other point to address also is the use of Ethereum. I mean, I think this is a well-known fact, right? Ethereum is a robust blockchain also with a system of smart contracts for storage and token transfers. And of course, as we know, also a major player in the DeFi space. So I think, you know, the combination of uh, Zilliqa and Ethereum uh, underpinning our token ecosystem provides a very, very uh, solid uh, uh, basis or foundation to which, for which to build a business on. Okay, so I think Ethereum is particularly topical because as we know, uh, we are swapping uh, very soon from the back to uh, protocol to uh, back to an ERC20 token format. Right, so Ethereum becomes very, very topical for us moving forward. Now, um, we've also had questions about, you know, uh, the Binance chain <clears throat> and how we are going to, uh, how that's going to play out, right? Seeing as how we are moving back to Ethereum and uh, Zilliqa. Zilliqa has always been there, but more to Ethereum. So I think uh, what's quite clear is that we're going to give a period of time uh, for our back to holders and uh, for them to swap back to an ERC20 uh, format moving forward. And moving forward, you know, our support will primarily be for Zilliqa and the uh, Ethereum chain. Okay, that will be our focus moving forward. So there will be a period where, you know, obviously everyone's not going to do the swap at the same time. So we'll give a reasonable amount of time, which we will announce shortly what that time period will be. And uh, following that, you know, we will move on from uh, the, the Binance chain, essentially. And our focus and support will primarily be for Zilliqa and Ethereum moving forward. Okay. Uh, Next question, question number nine, is you know an update on the token burn for quarter four 2019 and 2020, uh, which is where we are now. So I think this has been you know obviously a very very topical question, bearing in mind what has happened in the last couple of weeks. So I want to clear up this question once and for all. Uh, we will do a token burn. Uh, it will not be immediately, but it will be in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, we are basically going to time it to be very close uh, to the completion of our equity raise. The reasoning for this is, uh, is clear. We uh, are facing an unprecedented uh, business challenge, right? Not just to us, uh, but to all businesses out there with the current economic uh, climate. So before we make any moves, um, we want to make sure that we have 
sufficient padding financially, we have sufficient reserves, right? So that, you know, whatever we do, uh, there is always uh, uh, the required financial support to follow through, not just do a burn and then, you know, start worrying about what's going to happen next. So as a commitment, we will do it uh, as we have committed to the community uh, many, many times, admittedly. Uh, it's just now timing. It will be done not immediately, but in a couple of weeks time. Okay, so obviously, uh, when we're ready to do the token burn, uh, we will come back to you. We will update the community. So you don't need to chase us, rest assured. Um, we know our responsibility. We have agreed to do it and we will get it done. Okay, so no two ways about it. Uh, now, what do we do for 2020 uh, in terms of token burn moving forward? So on this point, I also want to be clear that moving forward, we will look at other measures uh, to basically uplift the token value without, um, without going into a token burn situation, right? The reason why we are shifting away from the token burn strategy for 2020 is very simply economics and finance. Okay, we, uh, and of course, tokenomics as well. We, uh, as Crystal has already touched on, and I will also elaborate later, uh, we have a number of emerging partnerships which all will require utility. And the thing with utility is that we need more tokens, not less. So were we to burn the tokens, uh, the valuable tokens that we, are, we have and we will acquire back, it effectively means one, you know, we put cash out of the system and very, very importantly, we've also put tokens out of, out of the system, which cannot be recovered. So this will leave us short of tokens that we need to run utility programs with throughout this year, next year, and the year after. So we feel that from a prudency standpoint, we will not burn tokens for 2020, but we will find other measures to basically elevate the token price or the token value. Okay, these will range from obviously um, the, uh, the uh, token utility uh, functions that we are kick kicking in uh, that will drive the demand and hence the price of the token. Uh, in a very organic, very natural manner, which any project, let alone us, should be aiming to do, right? Our price should not just be done or run by speculation on the markets. This is not sustainable. I think I've made this point clear in a number of uh, AMAs before this, but I think I need to, of course, repeat it, bearing in mind uh, what's happened the last couple of weeks to reinforce that you know, we are serious about utility and we feel that this is a long-term way of actually uh, running a sustainable uh, token value support system. I think that's another point. And then you know, the third point to be made is that we will be running um, you know, ongoing staking programs uh, for basically holders to hold tokens um, you know, particularly, you know, all our supporters who have been loyally supporting and following the project. This is to incentivize, you know, our token holders to stake their tokens, not to trade them, and basically, you know, taking them out of uh, the trading pool, shall we say, right? So this was also have an indirect effect of, um, you know, uh, uh, increasing demand drivers for the tokens, and then the price. And of course, we are going to create a reward system uh, for our token holders for doing so. So hopefully, you know, it's a win-win-win situation for all concerned uh, to do this. So these will be some of the major measures that we'll be putting in place to also put what we call inorganic uh, demand drivers to help push the token price in the right direction. I mean, I need to emphasize at this point, right, that, you know, guys out there and ladies, 
uh, of the community, you know, um, despite whatever is being said about uh, the team, the management, and all that, uh, we have the same interests as you. We are still very, very large holders of the token, and we are going to end up owning even more moving forward. So it is in our interest that you know uh, the token price moves up, not down. Okay, so in the end, we all want the same thing. So I think. Um, Okay, uh, I think this is a related question uh, to the, this is question number 10. When will the token swap report with all information be published? Uh, we will be doing the first publication next week. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, uh, we will provide a regular monthly update or uh, in the intermediate, any uh, significant uh, changes or movements we will also issue an update and not wait for the monthly uh, date of release of the regular reports. Okay, so starting from next week, you will be seeing, you know, regular uh, tokenomics uh, reports coming out from the uh, bolt, bolt team. Okay, um, I think I've answered that question. Uh, okay, I think the next question relates to bolt uh, I believe this is both token security. Could you uh, please shed more light on security side um, of the token ecosystem? How secure is the both structure? What measures have been taken? Okay, um, I think this is a very good question. So, uh, as you all know, last year we uh, we ran an internal audit on the token, not. The finances of the company. Let me be clear. We ran uh, an audit uh, uh, procedure, which was to do with uh, an equity raise that we were doing. So the whole point of that report was to look at where there are weaknesses in our token uh, and blockchain security, and uh, you know uh, areas where basically we needed to make corrections or that we needed to beef up. So I think um, that is an ongoing process where not only do we audit uh, the finances of the company, but we also audit our security uh, of our platform and of our tokens. Yeah. So um, having said that, uh, there are also additional measures. As you all know, uh, all our smart contracts are audited by external un connected third parties uh, who provide a fully independent report. So that is, um, uh, you know, those, so that's one key point. I think for team token security, uh, all wallets have their keys stored on a ledger. So that's a second measure. Um, and basically all internal, internal systems, all cloud-based accounts and pools and so on and resources uh, all supported by 2FA, uh, two-factor authentication, uh, with the Pegasus wallet, which is also a, you know um, a key area. The private keys are directly stored on the device itself. So and the keys are removed from storage or on si on signing out, right? And then of course, very very importantly, because we have users. Uh, the security of our databases. So we operate uh, certain security protocols. We work with another number of world-class companies to ensure security of our backend. Uh, but we also, in addition, have database rules to control levels of access to our data. Right? Some data is available to the public, but the bulk of it is internalized and only accept accessible by you know, key members of the team. And these data points or data uh, repositories uh, can only be um, modified, accessed or modified by authenticated users. Right? And obviously these users are only the boat team and only at certain levels within the boat team itself. 
Okay, so um, I think um, covered a number of points. Crystal, maybe I can throw it back to you for the marketing points. Yeah, uh, sure. Then no I'll problem. jump in after. Okay, no problem. Uh, so uh, one question was, can you share uh, more of your marketing plans and who are the marketing targets of uh, your project? So basically we have two key goals here. Um, we want to promote the mainstream awareness and engagement of both content uh, across all platforms. So this includes web, social media, mobile, and we want to attract partners to collaborate with both on content, marketing, hardware, and uh, to expand the both ecosystem. So we are also looking to uh, collaborate with content influencers, specifically uh, content creators who have their own base of following on YouTube to co collaborate and co create. Uh, video content together. We also have a comprehensive uh, remarketing funnel and user behavior data, which allows us to re-engage and retarget our users. Uh, recently, we actually launched push notifications on our app and we're looking to look to use that strategically, for example, for lightning round to engage users and we bring them back into the app. We also want to do push notifications to notify people of interesting programming that can come out on live TV channels. So these are just some ideas that we're doing when we talk about retargeting and re-engagement. Ultimately, what we want to do is to achieve high daily usage of the app, which, is, which we believe is possible once our new interactive features are launched. So at present moment, we record very high daily usage of our live TV channels and live radio segments with over half an hour spent on an average per session. Okay, next question. What development plans does Bolt have in uh, 2020 and 2021? This is a very, very good question, I think with a very long answer. Um, I think let's look at it in a couple of uh, sections, basically business growth, marketing, uh, partnerships, token developments, and new markets. I think for business growth, what we want to do is to onboard a very good pipeline of uh, flagship advertisers where we want to implement a very specific token utility. That is, users will be able to earn tokens for watching the right kind of ads and participating in advertiser surveys on board. It's something that we're currently scoping out and working on right now. Um, and that I think is something that'll be really good, not just for the growth of our ecosystem, but also the growth of our uh, advertiser pipeline and adoption of the app. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing, if I look at business growth as well, is to really look at how we can uh, accelerate the adoption of interactive features that we have uh, in our app. So lightning round, you know, making it more of a platform and not just a product that we're pushing out, you know, looking at how we can actually grow the ecosystem through development and roadmap planning for Pegasus as well. These are very important key factors. Marketing for us has been really critical. Uh, I mean, part of why we talk to the community so often is so that we can get feedback and also improve on how we approach user engagement and user retention. So in terms of marketing, what we want to do in another sense as well is to encourage our users to market the product for us because they feel, you know, they have a vested interest in it. Working with influencers, as I said as well, is really critical because we're able to actually tap on their user base to basically drive the adoption of our app forward. So we're even looking at, for example, getting influencers to host uh, lightning rounds with us. And we're looking to also expand out the feature of lightning round so that you can play lightning round anytime and not have to wait for a game show to happen uh, this Friday or this Saturday. Uh, partnerships wise, we have been very aggressively expanding on our partnerships uh, despite the global pandemic. We're still in very active conversations every single day with our pipeline of partners you know, prospecting new people, and this covers content partnerships, hardware partnerships, you know, even the blockchain side of things as well. Um, and of course, you know, we're also looking at how we can work with um, other companies that might be interested in advertising on us or providing us content and see how we can work together. Uh, token related developments, of course, is going to be really important for us this year. Um, and one big part of it, of course, is finishing out our token swap and resuming the building of what we want to do in the ecosystem. Uh, things like you know, a smart contract uh, gateway uh, into Silica. This is something that's really critically important for us. Uh, we want to, of course, continually work with uh, good exchanges and new exchanges for liquidity options. And last but not least, you know, 
I would say we also want to be able to launch uh, new programs, as Jamal mentioned, uh, like um, staking within Pegasus app. This is something that we've had common requests for and we would like to do. Um, one, of the, one other thing that we would like to do as well is to implement fiat gateways in Pegasus. Uh, we already have ongoing conversations around that. Um, and of course, last but not least, we want to see how we can actually use, um, uh, have the token development in a sense where we can actually launch our Boat Olympus program, uh, where basically we're able to work with the largest holders of the Boat token on exclusive giveaways, on community building, on uh, sneak peeks and first to know information before anyone else if you are a strong supporter and a big boat holder. That's really important for us. So new market expansion is probably the last part, I would say new developments for 2020 and 2021. Um, we have been very fortunate to have a very strategic partnership with uh, Hisense and we're still looking to expand that even more because of the markets that they are very present in. So, you know, the Middle East is something that, of course, we've announced and we're looking to do as soon as some of the uncertainty around the global meltdown is a bit more settled. We're also looking to expand more into the U.S. at some stage uh, because of certain corporate events that could happen uh, further down the line. Uh, Africa as a continent is of strategic importance to us, for us, and, you know, through high census reach is going to be very critically important uh, for us to work together with. So I'll say we have a lot of uh, ground to cover. Uh, we have a lot of things to do in 2020 and 2021. And of course, you know, when we first started our journey in uh, 2018, right, we had a vision, you know, and we said we'll do certain things in a white paper. We've already done more than what we have said we'll do in a white paper. And now moving forward, it's just about really being able to scale all of the building that we have done, finish out all of the token swap and really scale and move it forward and bring real strategic value uh, from the business to the value of the ecosystem. Really critical. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you tell us more about the number of users that uh, we have? So uh, we've shared this before in our 2019 roundup. We've actually reached over 11 million users uh, last year. And this is because we've carried you know, coverage around Cricket World Cup, you know, Africa Cup of Nations, uh, Tour de France, Copa America, Rugby World Cup. Uh, what else did I miss out? Oh, I think I missed, I might have missed out one more. But we covered, we've covered about five or six uh, big sporting moments yes, last year. And approximately 10% of them, which is about a million users, are active across all our platforms every month. And when I say all our platforms, a lot of it happens on our social media pages. You know, we have visits to our website. We also have our pre-installations that are still going on in Hisense. And of course, we have our general in-app users, which are where our users in the site. Okay, when will both launch the new white paper and roadmap? Uh, the whole team is working on this right now because we want to build up, as you said, the 2020-2021 vision. But we've, of course, been a bit busy the first start of the year, also trying to rush out our TV app for Hisense. So we would like to... Um, uh, take some time to work on this maybe in the next month and share it with the community when that is done. It will be, I think, the third version of our white paper uh, since 2018. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's really the question. When is the new white paper 2.0 and roadmap shared with the community? So yes, we will be uh, sharing it, uh, I think, hopefully in the next month. Uh, can you tell me more about your user base? So our user base is mainly formed by sport enthusiasts. Uh, football and cricket fans are our main uh, target. Uh, it's about 69% male, 31% female, mostly actually between 18 to 44 years old. Um, which countries are our target markets? Based on our users and uh, partnerships, we have uh, South Africa, the US, uh, the UK, and actually Korea as well, uh, amongst many other countries in our target markets. We've also noticed a lot of really great usage and high engagement from our, from our users in Turkey. It's spreading. So I think, I mean, I would like to give a shout out to our Turkish community for always being super supportive of us. And also I think spreading the word because that definitely, I would say, had come from you know, what we're doing here on the token side. So thank you very much to our Turkish community. Okay, how important is data right now for both? Can we get more updates on the users at the Boat Vault? So data is a very crucial aspect for us at Boat, and we use data to evaluate the performance of our marketing campaigns and content across our ecosystem. 
We are also looking at doing more user testing, basically to improve the retention and engagement of our app. So arranging different features, you know, uh, doing user testing, A/B testing. So right now, looking at the past and present, we are also developing a lot of predictive models to forecast how we would like to continually retain users, you know, where, how much time they're spending in the app, which videos are they watching more, which videos are they watching less. Um, these are things that we're also doing on app, in app usage, it's very important for us. And also social media, because you can do a lot of A-B testing on social media postings. Um, which countries are the most popular across the Boat Plus app in the Pegasus wallet? So 11.8% of our current users are coming from South Africa. Uh, thanks to, of course, our partnership with the Hisense. 8.67% of our users come from the UK, which is great, yay, uh, because we have an office in the UK, specifically in London. 7.8% comes from the US. This is not uh, a figure that we're ignoring because we are looking to work with another hardware manufacturer for the US market, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. Not anytime soon, but by the end of this year. Uh, Turkey, with, as I said, 3.45%, which is amazing, our top four countries, so it's really great. Yay for Turkey. Then uh, Germany, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, the UAE, India, and Nigeria. So these are our top 10 countries at the moment. Okay, um, next question is related to what is the latest uh, status with the financier. So I don't know, Jamal, whether you want me to take this question or if you want me to continue. Oh uh, yeah, I can. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thanks, Crystal. I'll uh, just cover oh. up the next couple of points. Okay, uh, what's the latest status with uh, finance here? Um, I think, well, it's doc well documented. Um, you know, I'll come out here by addressing. Uh, the larger point beyond just what's the latest status with the financier. So we basically, um, uh, just uh, to, I guess, for those who uh, haven't been updated on the point, um, provided to the financier uh, in return for the facility that they provided to us, uh, security in the form of uh, BP2 and also uh, some ERC tokens um, and uh, the situation is that once they offloaded the uh, BP2 tokens uh, I believe almost fully uh, they were supposed to have returned the ERC20 tokens to us which instead of doing that they basically went to try and dispose of it. Um, they managed to dispose of some on, on Hotbit, and we are tracking these tokens uh, because we have visibility of what's happened. Uh, but we've blocked them from being able to do any more deposits. So we are still tracking the situation, but from our perspective at this point of time, they have nowhere to go with the remaining tokens. Um, and the tokens will effectively very soon, all, um, you know, uh, whatever's left that's not been swapped will all either be out of circulation or those that have been swapped will be destroyed. So the answer to that question is we do not see that they can impact us anymore in any manner. Right, we are watching, we are tracking. Uh, we have also spoken to the exchanges one by one to basically alert them of the situation so that these people have nowhere to go. So, I, I dealt with the point. Have put out the ERC20 tokens as security on hindsight. Um, even if they were not meant to go back into circulation, which was our intent, you know, that they were meant to provide as a short term security, but they were meant to be returned and destroyed. So, this is, you know, um, I don't want to leave the critics anywhere to go. Uh, this is a point that I think. The team 
um, and I, particularly myself, take responsibility for. Uh, this is an area that we should have judged better. Uh, it was an error of judgment, and uh, that is a mistake that we made, and we accept responsibility for it. I think, um, you know, we've tried to take action as quickly as we can. Um, and even the areas where they have liquidated quest, uh, tokens where, uh, you know, we were not able to stop, we will try and take retrospective action now. But I think, you know, the mistake is there. We've, we've recognized it. Uh, we've addressed it as best as we can. But I think what is very, very important now is how the team and I are going to fix this situation uh, moving forward so that, you know, uh, one, we can bring trust back into the community. And two, obviously, bring the token value up to where it should be to be more reflective of, you know, all the great progress that we're making in, a pro in the project. So right now, the price of the token does not reflect the progress that we've made on the project itself. Um, we feel that it will correlate better once the token utility kicks in through, the, through uh, use within, uh, within both and within Pegasus as well moving forward. So I have no doubt that we will be able to, uh, through utility, through measures such as staking that we're going to do and other measures that we're going to take to kind of uh, acquire back, you know, a lot of the tokens that have gone out there back into our own wallets. Uh, that eventually these measures will have a good effect on the price and bring the price back up to where uh, we would like to see it and maybe even higher, uh, particularly through the utility uh, functions that we're going to drive through, through uh, for the rest of this year through the business. Okay, so this is, you know, I'm digressing a little bit uh, because effectively our community is made up of two groups of people, right? We have our long-term holders who have come in um, you know, because they like the project, they believe in what we're doing, and uh, it is their way of participating in the project by subscribing to our tokens. So hopefully, from their perspective, when the project succeeds, it achieves all the milestones that it has laid out, eventually the token value will also rise. And then there is another group uh, of our community who are what I call more speculative or more short-term holders who have come in, uh, you know, in the hope that they're going to make some money relatively more quickly, um, you know, uh, from the rise in the price of the token uh, without necessarily being really interested in what we do as a business. So I think, look, um, addressing the needs and the concerns of both sides of the uh, community fans is very, very important. We cannot just talk to one group of people. We need to talk to both. And we need to speak with the right language. So I think the holders who have come in for the long term, rest assured, we are progressing well. As Crystal has said, uh, we are actually over delivering beyond what we promised in the white paper. Um, on the business and of the business, right? We, I think, are delivering and uh, uh, rolling out things that we never even anticipated when we first launched the project. So it's not even in the white paper. So for these members of the community, I think take faith, keep faith. Uh, we will continue delivering new aspects of the business, um, which are going to be really interesting and game-changing this year. And I have no doubt that eventually the price of the token will track how we're doing as a business as well. On the other side of the fence, we have our more what I call speculative or short-term holders, right? So guys and ladies out there, yes, you know, we recognize that, you know, the token price is not where it needs to be. We're, we're all unhappy. You are unhappy, we are unhappy. And uh, I think, uh, a number of these measures, uh, for instance, uh, you know, the staking, 
um, you know, controlling the entire token circulating supply, um, you know, uh, and uh, basically looking to acquire tokens moving forward. Uh, obviously, encouraging members of the public, you know, to buy in as well, uh, because the token price is moving in the right direction, uh, will all help in the short term. Uh, okay, of course, not to also forget the token burn that we're committing to do. Uh, will all help um, measures, you know, will all be measures that will also address the token price in the short to medium term. So, you know, we're not just addressing, you know, the business end of the business without addressing the needs of also, you know, our more speculatively driven token holders. Uh, we are conscious that there are both groups of people out there who form our community and uh, we will aim to basically take measures that will address both the business and also, you know, the token uh, value elevation moving forward. Okay, so... Um, yeah, we're thinking of our entire community here, not just one group. Okay, so I think I've addressed the point about these financiers. I think basically we've neutralized them. And uh, I think we can really, on this end, focus on, on moving forward. Um, the funds that were raised, because uh, this has been another question uh, that has come up quite often, from the financing, I think we've put to good use uh, it hasn't gone to waste. Um, you know, you will see from the partnerships that we're going to be announcing in the next couple of weeks. I'll speak a little bit more about it at the end of the AMA. Uh, these couldn't have happened without us pumping in additional funds. So, yes, you know, um, sh some short-term pain, but I think the money has been well um, allocated to really um, you know, build significant aspects of the business moving forward so that we have a solid footing uh, at both in terms of a business, right? Uh, that we all can be proud of. Um, I think uh, I was also asked, I think this is not in the list of questions, you know, what's happening with uh, the uh, financial aspects of the company? Well, um, parts of the group, uh, uh, the bulk group, our year end, our financial year end is at the end of January. So this was barely a month and a half ago. So what we're doing now is we're closing the books um, on the accounts for 2019. And once the books are closed, we will be calling in for an audit. Uh, this is a financial audit. And, uh, you know, I commit to basically publishing the results of the audit as soon as it is available. So timeline, normally from the close of accounts uh, to the close of audit and publication of accounts at, from this point of time will roughly be about two and a half to three months, right? This is a normal time frame for companies that end uh, their year end in January. So normally publications of accounts is possibly in, in, the, in April uh, and possibly uh, early June, sorry, uh, May and early June. Um, so we'll be working towards uh, that end to try and get the accounts published so that you guys have a financial snapshot of how the company did uh, for the financial year 2019. Okay, so this is the auditor account. I need to make a point that as a British Virgin Islands company, we are actually not required to publish accounts. Uh, but I've said for the good of corporate governance um, for our business and also, you know, uh, for the good of our community, we are going through the audit anyway, uh, because this will give more security for everyone concerned uh, about the financial state of the company. So, uh, as I said, we don't need to, but we will do the audit and we will share the results with you. Okay, uh, what kind of growth are you expecting for the next three to five years uh, for both? I, I think this was, um, it there would, didn't appear to be a specifically finance oriented question, but I'm presuming that it is. So we are expecting to see very, very good growth. 
Uh, I think Crystal has shared with you some of our marketing plans and how we are planning to grow uh, the bold business, uh, our user base, our revenues through a system of partnerships. So the partnerships are not just for what I call vanity metrics, you know, just for saying we have this partner, that partner. You know, the partnership system is a very, very valuable part of our growth strategy because we don't believe in throwing huge amounts of money to create uh, marketing campaigns for which there's no way of judging tangible results. And also because we don't believe in buying bias, which a lot of uh, internet driven companies are doing out there, raise a lot of money, deploy it to buy users. So we feel that the better and more strategic and more economically uh, viable an efficient method of increasing our user base and increasing our growth is via a system of partnerships, uh, which uh, we will we have shared and we will continue sharing because we are continuing to add partners as we go along. So it's not just a set of partners; it'll be partners to cover basically the whole planet, right? So, and I think we're already doing quite well where that's concerned. Some of the partnerships have been signed already. Some are in the midst of being signed and there are some to come uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, the whole point here is about you know, increasing our footprint, increasing our user base, increasing our revenue, okay, without um, killing ourselves in the process. So basically, I see our huge growth in terms of user base and uh, financial results actually being from next year onwards. Uh, we had good year last year. You know, very, very unusual to have a profitable company already at this early stage. We will have another uh, good year this year, but next year is where I think we will be seeing huge growth. Because um, notwithstanding, I think that financially we're doing okay last year and this year, uh, there's still a lot of building work happening internally, right? On the blockchain side, uh, on our uh, code that is supporting our software, uh, obviously developing out our uh, content offering, making it bigger, deeper, wider. And uh, of course, continuing to also build on our distribution partnerships out there. So lots and lots of work still going on. Um, and it will take us possibly the rest of this year to complete the bulk of our building. And next year is where I see, you know, huge growth happening um, moving forward. So I think there's, there's actually quite a lot to be excited about uh, moving forward. Okay, I think um, there's a question here about the Olympus program. So this is you know part of the staking program that i mentioned earlier about you know getting our long-term holders uh, to hold and getting more of our holders out there to hold on a long-term basis right so you know the olympus program is basically to take care of these long-term and loyal holders of ours so effectively olympus is our own internal vip program uh, you know, which basically uh, will be launched uh, in quarter two, so coming soon, um, or potentially uh, could be early quarter three. But whatever it is, uh, we're working hard at it already, working out the mechanics, and it will happen fairly soon. So the idea here is basically to, for us to create, um, you know, uh, over and above benefits coming up from the uh, from the uh, staking program, also uh, giving insights about what's happening in the project first to our Olympus uh, program holders or members, right? So they get a first view of uh, what's happening uh, within the business. Uh, we hear also what they have to say. Uh, we have, you know, a small groups of AMAs to address certain points with them uh, and basically other programs, uh, goods, premiums and so on, uh, which we will avail to this special group of people. So hopefully, you know, a lot of you out here, you know, who are either listening to this recording 
uh, or participating in the AMA today will consider you know a more long-term holding perspective of our tokens and you know uh, by that measure become members of our Olympus program so uh, looking to having uh, a more personal touch with all of you moving forward okay uh, how are the business developments in South Africa and Africa um, I think good um, there are obviously our key partner in Africa is Hisense but we are also looking um, at partnerships with other companies and entities principally in uh, East Africa so we are looking uh, specifically at uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, uh, Tanzania so we are in discussions with uh, local telcos uh, in the uh, Eastern African region, basically to work with us uh, to become our local partner to distribute gold uh, to their subscribers. So this will give us reach to millions of users, uh, you know, as part of the partnership growth strategy that I spoke about, about five minutes ago. Uh, so this will be part of that uh, partnership uh, arrangement right also uh, we touched on our work with Brit farm so Brit farm is the uh, pharmacist wholesaler and uh, who we're working with so basically we're looking uh, to work where they have distribution particularly in Somalia Kenya and Ethiopia uh, where they are distributing wholesale for eventually at, in the late Part of this year looking at some of their retailers on the ground in these countries accepting bulk tokens as payment uh, for goods services uh, medicines and so on so there's a lot of mechanics uh, and education to happen which we are doing collectively together because we have to educate the people who are going to implement this on the ground uh, but we feel that these territories are a uh, right place, you know, to test this utility for the bulk token in a very, very real manner. So, um, you know, so just yesterday I was there at Big Farm discussing uh, with one of the retailers who is on the ground in Ethiopia and Somalia who had come to the UK. Uh, so basically we had this discussion to see um, you know, he had some questions which I was able to answer and uh, to get a better understanding of how the boat token works. And, you know, the idea is that they as retailers uh, will look to be accepting the tokens as payment, right, moving forward, which uh, will be amazing once we can make it happen. So uh, that's work in progress. So that's happening on the East Africa side. Uh, West Africa, specifically in Nigeria, we are in talks with another distributor for the bulk uh, content, particularly for football, um, where some of our content that runs on the bulk plus and our web app apps uh, will be carried on the ground uh, in Nigeria for starters, and then larger parts of West Africa uh, moving forward uh, once the uh, partner that we're working with starts to themselves grow into other parts of West, West Africa beyond Nigeria. So currently, uh, they're well, uh, uh, well represented in uh, Nigeria, but uh, also looking to expand beyond Nigeria into other surrounding countries in the region as well. So we are in very, very in-depth talks with them already about how they are going to carry our content on their screens on the ground uh, in you know large parts of Nigeria to start with so uh, you know that's a heads up I'm sharing with you uh, all as you know uh, participants in the AMA this this afternoon but uh, more of that will be shared later uh, in our usual one pager when things have been signed off and everything is ready to be announced so that's our plan for um, for Africa, which as you all know is a, a huge continent and holds an incredible amount of potential. Uh, why is the uh, next question, 26, why is the uh, Middle East an important region for bold and how does it benefit the, uh, the uh, bold ecosystem? Well, uh, Middle East is, is a very, very big 
and diverse territory. I mean, we say Middle East, but actually it's being made up of many, many different countries. But what is common amongst all the Middle East countries are that they have large communities, even larger than the migrant, uh, than the local population. They have large populations of migrant workers, principally from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Nepal, uh, to some degree, Sri Lanka. So basically, our content, particularly our cricket content, is already appealing to these communities in their respective countries. So we thought, hey, um, you know, it makes sense for us to extend it to the expats from these countries who happen to be in the Middle East, uh, where you know, we have a natural extension uh, to the existing audience that we already have. Plus, I think uh, we've had quite a number of uh, payments company, telcos, um, and, and uh, general business groups uh, who've uh, gotten to know about the uh, whole application, who are keen uh, to work with us because uh, they think that our content will be able to help to elevate their own businesses, right, by cross-selling opportunity. So we think that Middle East is a natural target. Uh, it also conveniently sits between uh, UK and Europe, where we already have a base of audience, and South Asia, where we have another group of audience. So if you think about it, if we basically tackle the Middle East, then that whole area from South Asia all the way to UK, Europe, we have a huge base of potential users uh, for the boat platform and for obviously the boat token and the Pegasus wallet as well. So it makes a lot of sense for us. Uh, next question, question 27. Um, what is a partner portal and why is both working on this? So partner portal, you know, is a very, very important access point uh, for partners, advertisers, sponsors, content contributors, and so on uh, to have an interface to access the both uh, platform, right? Whether they want to contribute content, uh, they want to uh, put in advertising, uh, they want to advertise a uh, plan for a sponsorship campaign, and so on. The po board portal uh, is, or partner portal, is where we onboard them. This is where we will have, you know, login, uh, we will have the uh, planning tools, and uh, we will have the filters to, to manage, right? Uh, the onboarding process of all these external parties who want to participate within the bold uh, business. So basically, um, you know, that's, that's essentially uh, the whole idea here, right? And, uh, you know, it also automates the whole process of onboarding these parties without us having to have many, many uh, people or additional staff to manage each and every um, you know, content contributor or sponsor or advertiser. Just makes the process a lot easier. Okay, so hope that explains that. Um, question number 28, what are the plans with the board website? Okay, um, you know, I, I think for those of you who have already tried our new website, I think I don't really need to say a lot more. I think it's like you know, going from Earth to, to the Moon, uh, literally, because uh, this, the new website, you know, which our web team have worked so hard on, uh, has been actually uh, transformational to the first experience a user has of both. You know, it's so much more dynamic, it represents our content better, it's responsive, and, you know, it's more fun to use. Uh, than the old website that we had, right? So, um, you know, so the idea here is that users can come in, scroll through, you know, use the application, access our content and experience without necessarily needing to download the app to get that experience, right? So I, I think, um, you know, these from my perspective or our perspective, um, you know, are the main reasons uh, why you know, we launched a new website. I think the other point to also be made is that the web application uh, can also be implemented in a number of other environments, right? In vehicles, on other devices, on TV, and so on. Uh, 
uh, whereas the, the app itself is very hard to port to third-party platforms. The web platform uh, is seamless, right? Whether it's for us or whether it's for somebody else, we can scale and transition very, very much more quickly into other environments uh, with both. So that's also the thinking behind uh, the web version uh, of, of uh, or the uh, new website uh, or the new web app version as well. Okay, so hope I've addressed that question. Ah, okay. Um, so what's the next question, question 29. Uh, thanks everyone, by the way, for you know, bearing with us. It's been a long, long session, but I think uh, we are covering quite a lot of detail on quite a lot of points. So for those of you who can stay on, thank you very much. Uh, the rest of you who perhaps have to head off somewhere else, uh, don't worry, you know, we'll have this recording ready and uh, to be published for you to catch up later, okay? So what are the latest developments uh, for the lightning round? Well, um, actually, uh, we are about to organize and announce uh, the next uh, uh, lightning round community testing. So I think uh, just watch out for announcements from our team if they haven't already gone out. Uh, that you know it's open for registration and participation. So by all means, you know jump in again. Um, the why we're doing a second round of community testing is because um, the last round not everybody could participate because of an issue on the Apple end, not our end, but on Apple. Uh, so we've corrected that with Apple, and I think the new community testing. Uh, will be able to onboard more people to come in to uh, uh, give it a try. Uh, I think also very important to announce that with Lightning Round, when it actually goes into full launch, uh, we are actually um, uh, going to also have not just a football uh, version, but also a cricket one as well. So there'll be a football plus a cricket lightning round version. So there'll be two lightning rounds running for two different groups of um, you know, uh, sports enthusiasts. I think what's also going to be interesting, I can give you a sneak um, view, is that uh, we'll be creating new fun versions of lightning round. Um, I can't say more except that it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be funny, um, you know, and I think it's going to be quite cool actually, uh, beyond all the slightly more serious stuff that we're going to do uh, for cricket and football. So I think we recognize uh, that there's a lot of interest uh, for Lightning Round beyond just the traditional sports fans. So we're going to create another fun version of it. So keep an eye out for it. Okay. Uh, What's the strategy behind the current content on both? Uh, I think uh, the overview, right, is that uh, we've realized uh, over the last couple of months that we need to take a more lighthearted, um, more fun view, uh, not so serious, of the sports that we're covering, which right now are cricket and football. Right, so you would already have seen that by some of the videos that have been running lately uh, from our own team uh, and also uh, from our host James uh, and also some community participants. They've given us a very, very much more lighthearted, shorter, punchy uh, video uh, output compared to the longer form, more technical, more serious videos that we were producing in earlier months. I think this is based on the, um, uh, research that's come back that shown us that you know we need to focus slightly differently with our content production, and um, you know we're trying to address uh, what the research says basically by you know preparing content that we think will have a uh, uh, higher resonance with the user base that we have right now. I think uh, the other thing which I want to add also is our content isn't necessarily just going to be very, very hardcore sports. It will revolve around sports personalities, um, around sports stars, for instance, and sports stories, but it will also have a very human aspect to it. 
that will mean that we can also talk to not just hardcore or traditional sports fans, but anyone who's interested in a very fun, light-hearted, funny uh, human story. The whole idea here is we're hoping to build a bigger market rather than just trying to win uh, fans who may already be on other platforms over to us. I think the other element that is very, very key is that you know, we're adding more interactive features within our programs. Uh, so of course, as you know, we've got Lightning, which is interactive, State 2.0, that's interactive, uh, you know, and uh, we'll have a couple of other things during the week that will also be implementing more interactivity functions. But I think the big one is the fact that we are going into the esports sector or segment. Um, our, we have always had this intention. You would have seen that we had uh, content coverage in the esports sector going back maybe four or five months. But I think seeing as how you know, what's happening out there uh, today, uh, we feel the need to accelerate uh, the esports offering uh, to basically uh, be able to cover for some gaps that will be left because uh, there are no summer sports events this year, as we all know. So we think that rather than looking outdoors, we're going to look indoors um, at e-gamers. So um, we are working on a FIFA e-gaming uh, tournament that is going to happen within both. Uh, we are already uh, onboarding uh, potential uh, tournament participants, participants, and we've had quite a number actually. So, um, you know, this tournament will run on both, hopefully live. And, you know, things like, for instance, our staking and so on will be based around the e gaming because we have an ex absence of actual sports events on the field outside. So e-gaming, you know, even when sports, uh, actual sports events return, e-gaming will feature in a very, very big way uh, on board. So basically, uh, we, uh, you know, this will be a very, very new uh, element to our overall uh, bold content offering. And then obviously with uh, the e-gaming, there will be an opportunity for home and viewers and for our users to also participate more about the mechanics of how that will work um, in a couple of weeks time once we uh, finalize uh, the tournament format and uh, the way we are going to run the tournament and for how long on the boat plus platform we'll also be announcing uh, the interactive elements for our users as well um, so one of the key things uh, that we're working on uh, not just working on the content creation, uh, but also uh, we're looking at um, distribution, all right? So we don't, as I said, measure only downloads of Android or iOS versions of um, Bolt to be the measure of success. We have already you know, started distributing our content on many, many other platforms because the whole idea here is we want more users, more eyeballs, because the whole point of our revenue model is on advertising and sponsorships. So the more views, the more interactions, uh, the more distribution we have, uh, the more it quickly increases the metrics for us to go and sell uh, more successfully among sponsors and advertisers. So, Currently, we are already talking to companies, um, not talking, some we are already signing off, uh, distributors in UK, Europe, uh, into uh, the Middle East, uh, into Africa, I mentioned earlier, uh, into Southeast Asia, we're working with a couple of telcos. Uh, we're also working um, with one of the largest telcos in the world, um, you know, to distribute content uh, into their ter footprint, territory footprint in Africa into South Asia and also into their home country, right? So um, lots and lots of distribution uh, activities going on. And, uh, you know, what this means is that within the next couple of months to a year, uh, you know, we'll be seeing the bulk brand, bulk content in many, many other countries. 
I think, um, you know, I had a question about why some of these global companies are looking uh, to bulk, right? Which, you know, uh, which relative to say a Netflix or relative to a Hulu is not as big a company. Why are they looking to us, you know, for, for content? I think a number of reasons. One, uh, because there is very, very little new content out there, particularly this year. Uh, and particularly in the sports field. So we are one of the few companies still generating content through our own ingenuity and flexibility. And this is fresh content that we're generating. Uh, you know, we're generating co uh, content at very, very affordable prices. So, you know, making our content accessible uh, on a license basis to a lot of other parties. And third, you know, we are just producing very interesting, very different content uh, that works uh, for these other partner distribution companies, you know, because of their profile of users or subscribers or community members. So, you know, as far as they are concerned, we are ticking the right boxes uh, with regards to the content that we're producing, uh, ticking the right boxes for them. So I think this is the thinking. Uh, behind the, uh, you know, uh, behind our content strategy. Uh, okay, uh, hopefully some last few questions, guys. Um, you know, I have a question here for us, which says, I like the ambassador content on both watch all the shows, any more things coming up? Yes, you know, we are increasing um, you know, the level of ambassadors, content creators, partners that we're working with out there. So, you know, uh, obviously we can't publish everything because the content that comes out needs to be of a certain quality. So, unfortunately, we have more content than we can actually take on. Uh, but we're still obviously looking for great uh, quality content out there that's interesting, that's light, that's funny. Uh, so, you know, by all means, if you have great content or you have great content ideas, please continue to reach out to us because, you know, you are helping us to help the community. Okay, so uh, please uh, do get in touch. Um, are there plans to work with a football club? Yes, I mean, we um, actually, we haven't announced. We are working with a couple of global sports agents who are representing players and clubs. So through these agents, uh, we're actually able to access the clubs and the players that they represent, right? So I think the first one you saw was already Wes Brown who came on board, uh, who, you know, is, uh, is a major Manchester United legend. Uh, so, you know, he came through our agent network and, you know, um, we also have relationships with agents which represent current players and clubs. So we are forming a strategy uh, around how they will come in to help us produce content uh, for our users and uh, how we can work with them, not just to produce content, but also provide a platform for uh, uh, development programs that the clubs are running. Not just for football, by the way. This is also for cricket. Okay, so football and cricket, we're doing the same. So this is not going to be an immediate thing. I think over the course of the next few months, you'll see us onboarding clubs, stories about them, players, stories about them as well, both in cricket and in football. Are there, uh, next question, question uh, 33. Uh, what is the Bold Advisory Council and why has it started? So I think we um, you know, started the Advisory Council, which is made up of senior community members uh, and people, you know, who are familiar and, um, and, and have good experience with business and, uh, you know, who have a good view uh, of the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, we pulled this group of people together to provide uh, an advisory panel to the management team at Bolt. I mean, look, guys, you know, um, we don't know everything. Um, you know, we, as with all other businesses and humans, make mistakes. Uh, this is inevitable in business. It's unavoidable. Uh, but the point here is how can we make less mistakes? How can we learn from the ones that we do make? 
uh, the idea of the council is to provide another set of brains, another set of eyes, another set of hands to help the management team uh, in what we do every day. And their role is also to provide us a perspective of how the community is feeling, right? Uh, not just how we think the community is feeling, but actually input directly from the community about how they are feeling and what they think we as a team should do to address their concerns or points or suggestions. So this council was formed about a month ago, you know, because we realized that we need a better feel for what's happening out there in the community because, you know, we are not touching base with the community all the time. So the idea here is that, you know, they provide us with a solid base of ideas, suggestions, um, you know, even check us, you know, uh, when things may be undoing, un unbeing done right, to come back and say to us, guys, hey, you know, I think you need to address this. Or I need you to think about doing this in another way, right? So it adds a level of check and balance to what the team is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, it, the council was set up for you guys out there to also take care of your interests, you know, insofar as a relationship is with us running the, uh, running the boat project. Uh, <laughs> I've got question number 35. Um, uh, I like a bold t-shirt or mug. Where can I order this? Okay, we're, you know, in a thousand things that we need to do. Uh, we're also looking to start what we call a swag program. So these are all the boat merchandise. We produce uh, quite a fair bit in the past. A uh, number of members of our community have these, uh, but we'll try and produce more. Uh, we've got great designers on the team and you know, the designs that they've come up with actually look great, you know, whether on t-shirt, on a mug, on a pin, uh, we've had some very, very good collateral material in the past. So yes, you know, we'll be producing more. And, uh, you know, we'll see how we can make that available, particularly to all of you who are our supporters, right? We need you to be not just verbally, but visibly supporting us as well. So uh, we're not going to pay you for advertising, <laughs> but we can definitely give you a t-shirt or a mug, right, to demonstrate the help that you are giving to us for, uh, as members of the community. So we'll keep you posted for sure. Uh, are you expanding the community other, to other nations as well? Yes, correct. Um, we have a community manager program uh, that we're looking to kick off at the end of April. Uh, this is centered around where we have large numbers of users and community members. So uh, uh, our, uh, you know, our team members uh, before this, uh, our friends out in Canada, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, you help us, you know, basically to kick off this community uh, uh, management program, uh, which we will follow through on later this month, uh, basically to identify who are representatives uh, in the community in these respective countries that can represent uh, the boat project and have a sort of a daily day-to-day -day contact point uh, with the communities in those countries, for instance, Turkey or Bangladesh or Pakistan, um, you know, even here in the UK, for instance. So this is something that, yes, we are going to do. Um, is Bolt looking into the esports market? Yes, I've covered this point already. Uh, we are going to kick off fairly soon. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be an exi exciting uh, addition to the Bolt um, lineup of content okay so i think that's it for uh all the key um you know uh, bread and butter questions relating to all the subject matter that relates to uh, the now and here uh, I've got a couple of other questions uh, with regards to major developments which i think it's fair to share since you know, all of you took the time to come and join us today about some of the things that are, are going to happen. Crystal, be, you know, feel free to jump in uh, if, you know, I'm short on certain points. Uh, but, you know, uh, idea here is to give you guys a sneak peek on some of the things that we're working on right now. So I think I mentioned uh, earlier on 
uh, conversations that we're having uh, with two major global telcos. Uh, let's just say, you know, these two telcos combined, um, nobody can even come close to them, right? Because I think ostensibly they are the largest and the other one is either the second or the third largest telco uh, in the world, right? So we're working with them starting with a content distribution arrangement because they want our cricket and football content for their respective uh, subscriber basis. So this is a huge, huge win. Uh, the biggest telco uh, actually came to look for us in our Singapore office a couple of months ago. Uh, we had to work on uh, the proposal to them, which took almost two months because there was so much that they wanted from us. So um, we've reverted back to them already and you know, we are trying to fine tune what the final offering is going to look like uh, that they will make available to their subscriber base. So this is you know, uh, an amazing development uh, from my perspective because uh, very, very few companies will be able to work with uh, these telcos, you know, let alone have them be the ones who actually look, came to look for us. So I think uh, that's a very, very major development. Uh, we also have, uh, I think I touched on the fact that we are in discussions already for uh, uh, distribution into Eastern Africa. This is fresh hot off the press because it was a conversation we only had about two days ago. Um, you know, so uh, you are the first to hear this. Um, they are a significant telco in East Africa, not the biggest, but they are a significant player. And uh, partnership will, with them will give us, you know, a huge, huge uh, footprint or landing into East Africa, which has a huge number of people. Um, we have a discussion, hopefully, that will close up into a distribution arrangement into Nigeria fairly soon. This is a discussion that's been happening uh, last two, three months. Um, but I think we're finally at a point now where, uh, you know, we are happy, both sides, with uh, the working relationship and the content that we're going to give them. So hopefully very soon, you know, our users and our fan base in Nigeria will actually see um, the boat content on third party screens on the ground in country. Uh, developing also uh, is a content distribution deal with a company uh, in Europe that will be distributing um, some of our cricket and uh, football content on their platform. So I believe uh, that's just waiting final signature. So hopefully within the next uh, two to three days, early next week, we should have that signed off and we can announce to you. Uh, we also have a distribution deal uh, with a content distribution company in uh, Dubai, which hopefully we can sign off also by sort of early middle next week, which we will announce. And, um, and there's a payments company in Dubai as well that we're in discussions with uh, that hopefully, you know, we can tie up loose ends on by, by next month uh, because they are the ones chasing us for, for the content. Um, I guess last but not least um, is uh, progress with our TV launch uh, on the Hisense TV platform. So, you know, our web, development team uh, have been working really, really hard at this uh, with obviously uh, close support from uh, Hisense themselves. And uh, we hope uh, later this month, we will be able to start testing already. And uh, we hope to basically make an announcement together with Hisense next month uh, to roll up the uh, bolt service on high sense uh, televisions. Uh, Crystal, did I miss out anything? No, I think you've uh, covered uh, quite, a, quite a lot of good ground. And I think some of the new updates that we can give a sneak peek uh, for the community, I think that's important. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's good. So um, yeah. Yeah. I think we will announce, I think we will announce and of course be able to uh, share more detailed information uh, 
about every single partnership with the appropriate uh, one pages and also the appropriate uh, explanations on what this partnership actually means for our community. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we've, we've got a couple of one pages uh, that need to go out. Uh, which we will do uh, hopefully by next week because this week, uh, last few weeks, guys, you know, really, really sorry. We've been overloaded, really, really overloaded uh, because of our equity race that's in full, uh, full swing right now. Uh, obviously, quite a lot of work needed to be done on the content side, particularly with the lockdown. We had to re-engineer quite a lot of our workflow. And then, you know, obviously dealing with all these token and community related stuff uh you know uh, which is you know the hot topic of the moment but i guess um on the subject of the partnerships uh i want to expand a little bit more uh cuz you know the partnerships that we have are very very significant you know some of them took almost a year to build and uh i think some of you out there probably have been reading some rubbish uh, regarding you know our partnerships and they don't mean anything by obviously people who've got nothing better to do um, so I want to cover these points a couple of points um, you know the I think one of the points being made is that you know the partnerships don't carry weight um, you know one of them being zeroed in on our partnership with Hisense look without going into detail um, you know, this, this is the third largest TV manufacturer in the world who owns the Sharp and Toshiba brands, right? And yeah, okay, they work with a couple of other partners. The other partners happen to be companies like Amazon Prime, uh, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Dazen. Uh, so there was an accusation that uh, Hisense works with many other partners. You know what? If those are the many other partners, then I'm very happy to say we are one of those partners, okay? So uh, I wouldn't argue, uh, but I think the people who are making these points are the ones who look ridiculous, right? A third largest manufacturer of TVs in the world doesn't just work with anybody, right? Their reputation is at stake, right? Because these are billion dollar in revenue companies. Let's just say before we got to this point, they were running through us for almost a year, studying us to see if we could make the mark to become their partners before we moved into full integration process. So it is a big deal, right? I think a lot of the people who are making these comments, uh, the reason they're making these comments is because they've never done anything like this. Because, uh, and as such, they have no understanding of what it takes, right? So I think, you know, I'm sorry, but I guess my point to them is you don't know what you're talking about, right? So you can continue saying what you say, but in the end, I think um, there'll be egg on your face. That's what I would say. I think um, other point is that, you know, there's a general feeling the product isn't strong, our content isn't strong, you know, uh, the live channels that we have, anybody can have. Okay, I've got a very simple question. Prove it, right? With all the other projects, crypto projects that these people have invested in, come back to me, right? If you want to make these accusations, all these other projects that you put into money into, come back and tell me what the underlying product, project or business is, right? And then, you know, I'll keep my mouth shut. But in the absence of that evidence or information, I think they have no right. Right, my team and I and the community and our admins, we work damn hard, right, to put out what we have today. And it is no small thing. You have global companies approaching us to work with us, right? If that doesn't say anything, then I think nothing will, right? So I think our conscience is clear that we've delivered a, a good product. We recognize that there's a lot more work to be done, but we already have a working product and users and stuff happening that is of consequence and substance. So our conscience is clear, right? The investment that has been put into the company has been spent to actually put out a working business and a working product to generate revenue and value for our community. 
Um, and I think there was a point that also that keeps coming up, uh, you know, that our financials don't stand up to scrutiny. I'm not going to say more except that if we didn't think that, we wouldn't be commissioning a financial audit of the group, right? So when the audit results come out, we shall let them speak for themselves, right? If we felt we had something to hide, we wouldn't be commissioning an, an independent audit. So clearly, these are people who don't understand what they're talking about, right? So I think, you know, I want to put to rest these points and reiterate what I said at the beginning, right? Guys, as supporters of the project, we need to make our voices heard, right? We've reached out to senior management at, uh, you know, BitMax, uh, at um, KuCoin, basically to make our case and to have our voice heard as well. Because these people, right, the small group of people have been working to discredit all the hard work that has happened. As I said, you know, the scammers are not us, it's them, right, who are clearly trying to destroy, you know, uh, something that so many people have put so much hard work into, you know, by just spouting rubbish. So please, you know, uh, support the project, uh, speak up where we can in the respective chat groups for BitMax, KuCoin and all that to make our own voices heard, the voices of our supportive community, the team, and obviously needless to say, uh, Crystal and myself as founders as well. So I think um, I shall, man, I think, uh, I don't know about you all, but this is probably our longest AMA, but there's so much to cover. So uh, I'll open it up to the floor to see if there are any questions, Dave. Yeah, sure. So uh, we have several questions. Uh, I've added them in the chat, the Zoom group chat. Yeah. So uh, the first one would be, hey, Jamal, do you think it's best time to allow people to upload self-created videos on Bolt, considering almost everyone is in home uh, during the quarantine and have spare time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure, Raul. Uh, we're going to kick off a couple of things, um, you know, to kind of spur the whole process. Um, one conversation I had about someone wants to work with us on some very, very interesting content uh, to get reactive content as well from the community uh, I just had before this uh, AMA. So we're going to look at uh, how we can use that core content to generate even more content from the community. Uh, moving forward. Um, so yes, in answer to the question, we are going to do it. Uh, we think it's a really, really important aspect of what Bolt is all about. Not just content that comes from us, but also content that comes from our community, particularly during a time like this. Okay, um, question, don't worry Dave, I, I can read off, I'll cover it, uh, save, you the, save you the trouble. Um, are we going to get popular uh, cricketers on board as bowl ambassadors? Yes, we are. We are in talks with a couple of guys already. Uh, some directly uh, that we are approaching and some through the agents um, that represent them, uh, as I was mentioning uh, a short while ago. So yes, that's in progress and in process. Um, and uh, hopefully before too long, we'll be able to announce um, a known face representing the uh, cricket genre as well on board. Uh, when approximately would be the token swap report? Yes, uh, that will be okay. Um, so let me be specific here. We are very shortly going to announce how the token swap is going to work uh, and the timelines around the token swap itself. So um, basically that will provide the guide uh, to how it's all going to happen and when it's going to happen and how long we are going to allow for the swap to take place, right? So that it's all very clear. Then of course, um, we'll be also making all the other necessary announcements to clarify any questions that come up. And then of course, any updates uh, that there are will also announce uh, to the community so that you guys are posted at all times. And if that doesn't cover everything, you know, you 
always are able to reach out to us and say, hey, you know, uh, you missed out this point or, you know, I have a question that you didn't cover. Could you please address it? And, you know, we're, we'll be very happy to, to address those. I mean, I should tell you that over the course of the last few weeks, quite a number of people have actually already written in to us uh, directly. A uh, number of people I have actually spoken to personally. Um, you know, but obviously we can't speak to everyone and we can't address all the questions immediately. Uh, but we will try and address all the questions uh, as far as possible. Okay, so um, rest assured that we will come back to you. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I think I had, uh, we have a question here uh, from Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Uh, good to see you here also. The um, uh, question is uh, whether the uh, audit report raised the fact about the ERC unburned ERC20 tokens. No, uh, it was purely a security standpoint uh, for potential breaches uh, into our backend. Uh, so this, um, well, uh, you know, it's more of a security audit per se rather than a token or blockchain uh, centered audit. So it didn't cover the point. Uh, so as far as the security points were concerned, they were raised, uh, we have addressed them. And I think uh, it's an ongoing process where we will run this uh, security audit uh, on an annual basis, just as how uh, we cover our financial audits as well. Okay, a couple of other questions. Hi, uh, Gosetim, I think, uh, I think you are from Turkey. So hi there, uh, thanks for your question. Yes, we are EBITDA positive. Uh, we have a net positive profit as well. Um, I hope you know, that answers your question. Um, second question, if I heard correctly, the burn will stop. No, uh, we will still do the quarter four burn. Uh, and with regards to the 2020 token burn, uh, yes, we are not going to do it as a burn, but we are creating new activities basically to uh, address demand, which will have the same impact of price elevation as well. Uh, so the point about addressing the uh, change in strategy for 2020 is very simply this. You know, as a business, we have to continually re um, uh, review how we do business and what is the strategy moving forward, right? I mean, of course, if we are a project that doesn't actually have business, then whether it's year one, year three, year four, year five, there's no change to the white paper because there is no business, right? So if we say there's no token burn on day one, year three, there'll be no token burn, year four, there'll be no token burn, and so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is we have an evolving business and the premise of the business is revolves around not just financial results, but also around token utility. That was the whole point of why we built on the blockchain and adopted crypto. So it cannot be financially driven only. It also has to embed in token utility. So if we are to implement token utility for the level of partnerships and activities and business that we have, um, you know, uh, we are going to need all the tokens that we have, right? So burning them is going to just make our, our job more difficult because we are going to have less tokens to run the utility programs with. Having said that, right, whether we burn the tokens or uh, utility drives demand, the effect is the same, right? The effect will be to push price up. In fact, I would argue that utility demand not only will have a stronger impact on price, it will have a long lasting one compared to a burn. The point about a burn is it will have the temporary effect of elevating price for a point of time until you know people decide they have enough profit to then start cashing out 
and then the cycle starts again, right? So through business demand, this is more ongoing and more sustainable and a better way of supporting token value moving forward. Okay, so, you know, look, uh, the third question we had is, can the team be transparent with the proceeds meant for the burn? Okay, look, you know, with any business, there is a certain level of transparency, right? Even in a public listed company, the transparency extends to the financial reports that the company set, sends out. This we have already said we will do by the publication of our next set of financial, uh, uh, financial sorry, audit uh, financial reports, right? Which will give insight into how the company is being run and what the financials look like and how capital is being deployed within the company. Right, so for me, you know, uh, that's public transparency already and it's an accepted standard of transparency. So if that's your question, then yes, we are committed to doing it and hopefully that gives you a better view of how we're conducting the business moving forward. Thanks, Mr. Tim. Uh, appreciate your, your questions uh, to us. They're good questions and as I said, I hope I've answered them. Uh, yes, so I think we had a question from Rahul. Uh, hi, Rahul. Good to see you here. And uh, yes, we, I think, will have um, more user metrics uh, that we will publish on a monthly basis to share with our community to show how the, uh, not just the financial aspects, but also the usage of the uh, boat service and the consumption of our content is increasing. Uh, and yes, this we will share. This was a uh, input also from our advisory council that something that we as a team can do better, which is to provide uh, visibility on the key metrics of the company, right? So yes, we will do this moving forward and uh, share with you guys how much progress, you know, we are making because, you know, it's not just for us to take pride in the progress. It's for you guys as well you know, who are there supporting us day in, day out, night and day, right? So you should be able to share in the success as well of the project moving forward. So yeah, you know, uh, we will share that data with you. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I just want to make the point again. Okay, guys, look, whilst uh, app downloads are a good benchmark to measure, you know, how many people are downloading the app, I need to emphasize again, that's not our only metric. Uh, we are also measuring, um, you know, distribution channels uh, through our third parties for our content and how many people are viewing the content through those channels and also via our social channels, which are a key distribution platform uh, for our content. So as far as we are concerned, we are looking at as many outlets as possible uh, for the distribution of our content so that we can grow exponentially the number of viewers and eyeballs uh, and uh, people who are interacting uh, with our content per se. Whew. Crystal, yeah. I've never talked so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I think after this, I'm, I, I think yeah. I'm going to have a cup uh, of tea. <laughs> no, 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 you need, you need some water, some tea. Uh, yeah. While you're while you're saying, I'm also typing in the Telegram chat as well. Some people ask yeah, some yeah, questions. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean thanks, thanks. Uh, Dave, was there anything else that we wanted to share with our community? Yeah, I think we covered a lot of topics. I mean, a lot of respect for both of you. This is our longest AMA so far. Also for the community members that have stayed so long uh, listening to the AMA. Yeah, man, respect to them as well for yeah. bearing with me talking for I don't know two and a <laughs> half hours. Must yeah. Be <laughs> yeah, so that's great work. You know, from the community side, if you guys uh, look forward to support us, uh, make sure to follow our, uh, our Bolt Vault and sign up for uh, all of our newsletters, follow uh, Bolt Global Announcement, and of course, support us across all the channels in Telegram and Twitter. We appreciate it a lot. And uh, yeah, let us know uh, 
If any questions, maybe at Bolt Global Telegram, but I think we covered a lot uh, today. I think we will also be um, uh, sending out uh, quite soon the swap mechanics and timelines as well, right? Yeah, for sure. So that is coming as well. And uh, I think that is uh, one of the most asked questions currently in the community. Yeah. So uh, yeah, these are very good developments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, that's, uh, will be ready fairly soon because uh, we were needing to just check some items um, and areas with the, uh, with the exchanges. So um, Crystal and I will check in to see if we've got the necessary responses so that we can put it out uh, and down on paper uh, to share with uh, everybody else in the uh, community so that you guys have visibility on how the uh, swap is going to take place uh, and basically uh, the timelines and what are the next steps as well. Yeah. So Dave, I think when that's ready, uh, we, can, we can share that with uh, everybody as well. Yeah. Okay, good news. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Hey, uh, so thank you everyone uh, for, for jumping in today. Uh, please keep well, take care of yourselves. Um, we on the token side have your backs. We will do everything necessary to push uh, the token value in the right direction. And, um, you know, thank you for your trust and your belief. Uh, we will aim to correct, you know, areas where, you know, perhaps we could have done a lot better. And, um, you know, uh, we'll be aiming to uh, sort these things out moving forward, to put things right. Crystal, you. any parting words from you? No, I think you've said it all already, which is great. Um, okay. But thank you everyone, I think, for joining us today. And I think, as we've said, we're going to make the token swap process extremely transparent. Uh, we will uh, correct this and make this right for everyone. So not to worry. We yeah. are committed to that. Most definitely. Yeah, and I think I just want to add a final point for good measure to your point, Crystal, is that all the BEP2 tokens that are swapped out are all going to be uh, destroyed, right? Uh, so that, you know, uh, no more such issues uh, arise again and we can move forward and fo focus forward. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you, everybody, um, including all. All our team members also, you know, who took time out from work to join us today. Um, thanks for listening in and uh, we hope to see all of you uh, fairly soon at the next AMA. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, thank you, Jamal and Crystal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.